Um, my name is Jeannie Denholm, mm -hmm. and I have a business in Corona del Mar, California. It's called Southern California Art Projects and Exhibitions. The acronym is SCAPE. I was going to compliment you on the acronym because it's fantastic. Yeah. yeah, really good. I'm in marketing, so I love that. <laughs> oh, thank you. yeah. Southern California Art Projects and Exhibitions is a long name for. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's long. So, um, it's a known kind of in this area, Scape Gallery. And it really, when I started this business, um, I did have a business partner. We started it in 2003. She came from the gallery side um, of the business. She had a 20 year history of um, owning a gallery. I came from the art advising side and um, had worked independently. I had worked for galleries uh, in a director position, positions, but I, um, then started sort of just doing more on the art advising side and my strong art advising um, background I had the good fortune to work for the Broad Art Foundation for um, nine years where I was uh, curator for the uh, Eli Broad's corporate collection mm -hmm. and that put me kind of on the buying side working with uh, you know selecting work for these collections and I loved being on the buying side rather than when you're in a gallery you're always on the selling side so I sort of loved that. For me, that was a shift because I had always had, um, I had a strong background in gallery work. And um, that shifted my attention to being on the art advising side and actually really working with clients and buyers for art from a more objective viewpoint, not limiting yourself to only selling art that um, is represented by a gallery, but being able to work and develop relationships with a lot of galleries and getting into studios of artists from all over without that you know, again, gallery restriction of this is who we represent and this is who we, you know, sell. Right. So, um, so then I started this business because I missed, I had been working independently and in an office, but I really do love the public interaction that a gallery offers, the, a place where people can come look at art in person and talk about art. Um, in person and so I wanted what the thing that was sort of lacking I had a you know a successful profession but I was missing the conversation with the public about the art so opening this space um, in Corona del Mar was um, kind of a hybrid business where it we were a gallery that had exhibitions where we have an exhibition space so it, we have sort of you know a gallery feel but we uh, decided to be art advisors working in an exhibition space and that we, our vision was to work with clients based to educate and lead, but also um, respect whatever their particular interest in art might be. So it is primarily a contemporary um, art focus. It is primarily um, Southern California, you know, 90% Southern California focus of the artists. Um, but I do bring in artwork. Um, you know, I, I do collaborate with other galleries. It's not necessarily just artists that, you know, we represent. There are relationships that we have in place that have been in place for a long time because of my former business partner's um, gallery background. There was a lot of artist relationships in place. And it's a relationship business, as you probably know. Mm -hmm. So um, so we continued to show artists that w she knew from her former gallery background, and then certainly artists that I um, had met, known through other galleries in Los Angeles when I was working for the Broad Foundation, and then artists that we meet at, along the way. But so we try to be, um, one of the focuses I think having this business that separates us a little bit from traditional gallery is just maintaining an objective viewpoint on the artwork that we show. And it has maybe a little bit more, I try to keep a curatorial emphasis on it, that bringing, you know, group shows and curating and maybe they're theme based or mm -hmm. style based and um, creating, I think that's, you know, sort of, sort of my interest in the educational aspect and putting art into some yeah context for conversation too. Right. So well, um, partner Diane Nelson retired four years ago mm -hmm. and um, I was sort of faced with the decision of, you know, do I want to go forward? If I do go forward, do I want another business partner? What do I want to do? But I ended up um, buying her out and am the sole owner now. So it, the new chapter for Scape started about four years ago. So you're busy. <laughs> I'm busy. 
you're very busy, which is nice to hear. Um, So I did see the website. Obviously, I went to your website um, uh, and and I looked at, I haven't been to the gallery. I'm I'm here in Nevada. I'm in Las Vegas area. But um, that is my home is where where it is. So I I do plan on visiting it when I can when I come back down there. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I did see the website. Corona Gamar? No, uh, well, no, it's Costa Mesa, Newport Beach kind of area. Okay. It's in there. It's okay. within that area. But um, uh, so I did go to the website, and it's a beautiful website. It's really well done. And I think there's a lot of great okay. pictures on there. Uh, I'm going to share them. And as you were, you were talking, I was going to maybe show some of the photos of your, of your space and uh-huh. let people kind of see it because it, it is lovely. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So, so, you know, I think that that was fantastic. That was, I mean, as far as whenever I ask people, hey, tell us about yourself. That was great. That was probably one of the best ones. <laughs> I think we, we were well. We were well. Kind of a, how, I, how I got here. Yeah, <laughs> it's very good. So um, there was a couple of things I wanted to tap into uh, in talking with you, and is is uh, as I said earlier, is the state of the industry a little bit, but you kind of tapped into it a little bit too. Um, in in what you said is the other side of this, is there's there's the the the, the community of art or people who appreciate art. Um, there's an outside group that hasn't experienced that and has right. they don't go in and experience it. Sometimes it's because they feel like they need to take a course to even exp- right. to, to, right. to exp- uh, appreciate it. Um, and there's this intimidation. I think that sometimes people have about the environment and, and, and it just, you know, my, what I really think is important because there's so many young artists who've never even stepped into one who decided they want to explore their creativity, but they don't consider walking into a gallery and ex- the experience they're going to have, that they don't know how to look at art. I know this sounds strange, but I have the same feeling about education. We, we, right. we, we put kids in education, but we don't really show them how to learn anything. We just teach them. But, but right. you've got to know how to learn. And, and, there's a, there, and art, actually, oddly enough, helps you know how to absorb things in a different way using different right. parts of you. Right. Anyway, I feel the same way about uh, galleries. So I'd like to ask you initially, and I know this is kind of, you know, elementary kind of stuff, but why, why are galleries important? I, other than the fact that they expose people to art, what mm-hmm. happens to a person when they walk in and experiences something and walk out? What is your hope? What is your hope that happens for someone? Well, so it's like, I remember, um, as a kid, I loved art and I found that I was comfortable in museums, but I wasn't comfortable walking into galleries for exactly the reason you're sort of mentioning in that. I felt like I needed to know more than maybe I knew or it felt that I knew at the time. And so galleries were a little bit intimidating for me. Whereas a museum is a place of education. It kind of is a place where you can learn, right? Mm-hmm. Or, or exposure to. So um, I think with galleries, my approach, Um, at least for my involvement, is that I want them to be a comfortable environment. I want people to feel comfortable coming in. And I want it to be, again, when you visit a museum, it's up to you to read the wall text or maybe do a docent tour. You have to kind of seek out the information. Whereas I think in a gallery, you can have that kind of free dialogue with somebody that works there um, and, you know, have those, have conversation. And learn something while you're standing and looking in front in a painting and have, you know, have a two-way conversation about it. So that's something that I particularly uh, love about the gallery business. And that was what I missed when I got out of the gallery business and was just doing art advising. I missed those kinds of conversations, those kinds of exchanges. And um, I think the conversations that I liked was also showing work that might, you know, I'm in Orange County and made a conscious decision to open a gallery in Orange County. And there's certainly a lot of stereotypes when I was opening it, you know, it's not Los Angeles and there's a lot more, um, Californians from like, (laughs) a lot of conservative, you know, and I like, I, you know, I guess I like the challenge, but I, for all the more reasons, I loved having a gallery here because it was an opportunity for me to have those conversations with people and maybe expose them in a different way and more broadly to things, you know, they might not otherwise have understood. And so when you say, what is my hope when they walk in versus when they walk out is that my hope is that I had a conversation with them in front of a painting that maybe they didn't understand 
and that they had no emotional attachment to it mm-hmm. um, and couldn't understand really maybe why it was worthy of being on the walls, right? To having a conversation about it and um, hopefully them walking out going, oh, okay, I still maybe don't like it, but now I kind of get it, you know? Uh, so I just, I like those, that kind of interaction and maybe even just that understanding the medium and the process right? Um, and having that conversation, you know, in terms of the art, the creative process. process. So. I think artists are difficult sometimes because they communicate through their work and tend to not want to communicate in any other way. And, right. and when you're trying to ask, I mean, the worst thing, sometimes you can ask artists, what is that about? You know, like it's the last thing because they don't right. want to tell you, they want you to experience it and they want you to go through. But right. the, pro- the problem with that is that right now, I think that where we're headed and, you know, I know I got gray hair in my beard and I'm thinking, Oh, the internet, you know, but I think people, are, it's the gratification they get from instantaneous content all the time. Kids see a YouTube clip and laugh their heads off thinking that there was a lot of time put into it. And, and there's no, right. there's no, and, and I'm a believer that art is a, more about the, the maker of the art than, it, than the art itself. It, 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 you should be curious about where it came from. It's an artifact of something bigger and that, that you need to learn that. You need to explore that or be curious. And, and in my last interview, with Bradford was, when I go to a gallery and I look at a piece of art, the main thing I think about is what motivated the artist. And I try to picture the artist making the piece mm-hmm. and looking at the textures of the piece and trying to see why did they explore that. And I make this mythological person up in my head, if I don't know who they are, mm-hmm. of how it was. And then I look at their second piece and I place that mythological person and working on that. So even if I leave with a total misconception of what the artist was trying to say with the piece, it doesn't matter. Because right. I went through a process that was important. And, for right. me. and enjoying and, and enjoying. So I think that that's the thing that people don't understand is that right. you're supposed to work at the process of, un, of looking at art. There is no truth in it. There is no th- truth to reach. The truth is yours inside, you know, and you need to find it. And, right. um, and just to, and I know I keep, I keep kind of bringing up, some, and there's a problem with my interview process is I'm, <laughs> so I wrote a book about this. So I talk about it and I keep feeling like I'm repeating myself. But, but Pablo Neruda's poem, Enigmas, I brought it up like three times already, is my favorite poem by Pablo Neruda. And in the end, he says, you know, uh, I am the empty net that has gone on ahead of human eyes, dead in those darknesses, a finger accustomed to the triangle longitudes of the timid globe of an orange. I was like you, searching the endless star. And in my net, one night, I woke up naked. The only thing caught was a fish trapped inside the wind, saying that we throw out our impressions out into the world and when we bring back to see what the world gave us, all we see is our own opinions and bias. And so mm-hmm. that's how we are. We, 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 we think we're getting things externally, but really it's something inside of us that is being brought out that we're looking at that is influenced by our impression of what we see. And that's the thing that is missing in the world <laughs> and why I think galleries and art is important and why I think it saves lives. There is mm-hmm. a missing link right now and I don't know if I'm making any sense, but I think I, to you, I probably do. But, um, but, but I think that there's something that people need to learn. And my hope is through these videos that some young people start saying, you know what, that makes sense to me. And I want to be mm-hmm. part of that. Mm-hmm. And, so what and, your, main, your main objective, um, you had said earlier, is partly, so you're speaking primarily to artists, right? Oh, I'm thinking, no, n- actually not. I love, I, I'm speaking to artists a lot now because Tom's yeah. connecting me with, with you guys. Yeah. Um, but I like, I, I, I mean, I sp- spoke to a woman that uh, runs a hair salon because yeah. she, uh, she, so- she's an artist in her own way and she uses yeah. creativity to express her, herself. Right. And, and I talked about how it is to be a hair salon person, like in, right now in the time that it is. And I'm searching for these hidden wisdom people have about their, yeah. their work. And and because I think it's it's relevant and and I want a person who's a hairstylist to think themselves an art as an artist. I just right. So, but your uh, the art the um, I just want to make sure I understand. So the audience that you'll that you're putting these videos together and stuff are they all artists or are they? Yeah, well, I hope so. I hope that they're artists, yeah. and I and I hope that they're artists, and I hope that they're people who want to be artists, and I hope that they're creatives in general or people want to explore and understand creativity. Right. Uh, 
I've already interviewed musicians. I, uh, uh, you know, going going forward with that, I have a few that are lined up to to speak to. I have filmmakers I'm talking to, and it's an exploration of creativity. And art is a very you know, it's it, it's 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 you know very primal and it's and it's an old right. way of communicating and it, and it is a beautiful way of communicating. And artists are are interesting and unique and probably the most eccentric of all of, of painters and mainly and, and sculptors. Right. And like that are the ones that are most interesting to me, you know, personally. But, um, but my, my larger point, and then the purpose of this is to just get people to, 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 but this isn't about me, but thank you for your question. This is about you and, and what you're doing. <laughs> I'm getting up. I just want to, so your larger point, what you had mentioned too, was to encourage artists to visit galleries. Right. And, well, right. Yes, yeah, or see what it's like and to be driven yeah. to want to put their art on that wall. Right. I want to get my art to the level to where someone like you says, I want that. Right. And I think it's important. I love looking at art with artists, by the way. I mean, when I go to museums, it's really fun when I go with my artist friends because mm -hmm. what they look at versus what other people are, you know. Oh, yeah, it's totally different. Right. Very different. So I love that. Um, but, um, and I think that they, you know, we have these great conversations about what, you know, what I'm looking at versus what they're looking at. And so it's kind of fun that way. But, um, also, I just think it's really important that artists um, get to know galleries and freak with them because I can't tell you how many artists I have that walk in that want to show their work here. And it's complete, and they say to me, um, I think I would be a really good fit for your gallery. And I look at their work and I think, why on earth do you think this, you know, I mean, it's completely unrelated to my aesthetic or you know what I have on my walls so I think you have to if you really are serious about showing your work as an artist you have to really visit a lot of galleries get on mailing lists follow them and really you know uh, sort of get in their head about what they're showing and what their aesthetic is and the artist you know the mm -hmm. type of work Hey, guess so what? It's a, that, it's a job. Kind of business. There's a whole lot that can get out of it on a personal yeah. art level, but then just on a, you know, downright good business sense, it's it's important. Right. You have to understand that that you know, it's funny because I think that's something that's so true. I'm so loved that you brought that up. Because this is something that is, is hard to communicate. Some, I, I come from commercial art world mostly because of my marketing firm. And, you know, right. we're selling a product. But I still need people with the heart and soul of an artist, you know. I still want people to come in and try to really move people with the work. Mm. And, and I think that that's kind of interesting because when you're, you know, this is... I think it's it, this is the problem a lot, of, and I don't know. You probably tell me if if, I, if you think that you've seen this, but sometimes artists think of their work as like this artifact, you know, like this this holy work, and that and that when they present it, they, they they present it in that way to you instead of doing what most great artists that I know and that I've met are kind of like, well, it's there, man. If you like it, that's great. If you don't, I guess I'll just look at right. this other piece. The the, right. the the emphasis and energy is put into the creating of the work rather than the work. And, right. um, and I think that that's okay. the thing. And I think that's the first step. Yeah. Is, and, and I think that, that, that the, there's this strange, artists tend to earn their, not earn their egos. They earn them too early. <laughs> or they, 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 they think that they're relevant too early. And you have to earn that. You have to earn that. You have to get people to tell you and, 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 and tell you why your work is good. Because you don't know. You don't know if it is. And you don't know, you know what you're doing yet. That's the thing that's so hard about it. It's such a mystery. And that's why people don't know what creativity is. And, it, and you're not supposed to, but you're supposed to just do right. it. Floor <laughs> it. And yeah, it's true. Yeah. I, so I had some other questions here. Um, so, and you might've already covered it because you're, you're kind of really going at a lot of things, but um, so, wow, you had touched on almost all my questions. How, how do you see right now? Okay, let's talk about COVID a little bit and what's going on with COVID. And, and how do you see the industry changing now? I mean, because casinos out here in Vegas, yeah, you know, they're going that. through an entire change on how their the, the experience is going to be right. when you go into a casino. Right. What, um, what okay, about galleries? So I do have thought to share on that. But I just had a, one more thought okay. relative to the last conversation we're having, and then we'll move on. I just wanted yeah. to share this story. Um, 
one of my favorite stories working in a gallery was that I had um, somebody come in for every show and um, was really interested in the work that was being shown. And we had great conversations around the art. I loved what he brought to the work that I was showing. And, you know, we just had this great exchange and it was just somebody who I knew collected some art, um, looked at a lot of work. And anyway, I found out, I'm not kidding. I think it was seven months later, I found out he was an artist and he made work. Oh. <laughs> never once in the seven months of conversations that we had, did he ever tell me he was an artist. Oh, yeah. and wow. art, but we had exchanged so many great conversations about the process of making art, you know, what something meant to him, what didn't, what he liked about something, what he didn't. Um, having developed that relationship with somebody on that level, all of a sudden it was like, I want to see your art, right? I mean, I immediately yeah. made me his art. So I just, I, I share that story with a lot of artists because um, I think that you can build, it is a relationship business and how you build those relationships is important. And I knew that I would be interested in seeing his work. And I knew that I would probably like his work just based on never seeing his art, but through conversation and, you know, sharing that kind of getting into, he got, was able to get into my head and thoughts about art and I was able to get into his. Right. So I just wanted to that because it really is about, you know, building those relationships and having those conversations. Yeah. And a lot of, a lot of people I think need to hear that because the, the unfortunate thing is, they might be great, but the pitch was bad and mm -hmm. that, or the time was bad. bad. Timing was bad. Maybe the, it really is a great gallery, but not the right gallery. Right. And, and the, the no that they would get from you right. might actually cause them to feel like they shouldn't be doing this. Right. When, when in fact they should be, and, and it's just, you, you need to be able to, take, to know how to take a punch. And yeah. I think that, that the, the realism of that I mean, you know, art is suffering. I mean, it's not a cliche, it's true. I mean, most people that are successful at art went through a lot of suffering and got back up the next morning and went back to the, to the, to the canvas, you know, and, and went to work again and, and, and failed and then went to work again. And life is- great. About, Some great art comes from that right. place, suffering, right? Same, same right. with me. And, yeah. and, and there's a mythology that I think that in, within artists, you know, or, or at least that I, I, in my work, that what I kind of realize and what I tell young artists is, that that amazing painting in your head that you're trying to create, you never will because mm -hmm. you're not supposed to. It's in your head because you're supposed to chase it. And it's in the chase that, that where all the great stuff comes, not in the, you never reach it. If you reached it, you're not working, you're done. <laughs> We're never done. Yeah, right? That's awesome. I had an artist tell me one time, and I love this, mm -hmm. um, the famous question, how long did that painting take, right? <laughs> yeah. And I loved his answer. Because yeah answers to that question one is a lifetime yeah right if you've been painting and painting and forever the other question is or the other answer he had is sometimes it can come in a in an hour right you know you can paint five paintings over a course of a year and you might have that one magic hour in the studio or or day you know one day where you get the painting that you want yeah I'm so very, i think I, go both that both ways I'm known as I'm I'm known for being a very fast designer too because of you know I own the place and I'm a, and I know what you know my right. every hour counts and when I answer that question I say 51 years yeah when people ask yeah. me how long did it take you to do that I say 51 years <laughs> exactly <laughs> so it changes every year but right. um, uh, anyway um, anyway so going back to your question about the yeah. COVID and how that's going to change. I think it remains to be seen, but uh, certainly online right now is playing, yeah, was playing an important part before, is playing an even bigger part now. Mm -hmm. uh, your uh, first dibs and artsy platforms, you know, are um, having a hate right now. I mean, that seems to be the platform to buy art. So there are um, dealers that I know that have closed up their brick and mortar and are planning on just doing straight online sales mm -hmm. and um, I know some galleries that 75% of their sales right now probably are just generated from online and the, the thing the positive of that is that um, it does um, reach 
a broader audience probably. I mean, I know that there's artists that are <clears throat> work that's getting shipped internationally, which, you know, me sitting in Corona del Mar with the brick and mortar gallery, I'm not shipping a lot of work internationally. So you kind of need that online platform, you know, to open up a broader audience for some of these artists work. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's a, I don't think it's a negative. I think um, for me, I don't want to just sell art online because the big motivation for me, again, having a space and showing the space is I like the curating part. It's kind of my art part is the curating and laying out the show. And then it's about the conversations with the people coming in to see it and, and with artists and buyers and general public. Um, so I would miss that. And I going online, you know, doing that through the computer is not that interesting to me. Right. Uh, but the big changes I think you, uh, that we'll see, so you're gonna see some galleries that maybe just decide to move to the online platform. There will be some that can do that and it certainly cuts down on your overhead and your expense. Um, the disadvantage of that is I think you lose that experience and uh, that wonderful experience of getting to experience the work in person and getting to experience that particular piece of art um, as it relates to other works of art by the same artist or by others. Do you know what I mean? You're only getting then to experience one piece of art that you purchase online versus really kind of experiencing it as, you know, one part of a whole. So, and know. the experience of being in right. the gallery is different. Yeah. I mean, it's a, being surrounded by the works is, is right. an experience in itself. And I think that that would be missing online. There's a lot of things yeah. that are, you know, you, we do what we can do yeah. with the limitations that we're given. Um, but it's, 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 it's all, I mean, you can complain about whatever you want, but, the, but right. what's important is the arts being seen. Okay. So I'm kind of going right. back on what I just said. <laughs> I'm kind of debating with myself. That's but, all bad. Yeah. Um, and it's been evolving over time uh -huh. slowly anyway. I mean, artsy is a, a really big tool for artists to, uh, for galleries to sell work. Um, then there's the, the other shift. There's a lot of galleries that were relying on um, art fairs. The uh -huh. art fairs were supporting their gallery. And it was um, the volume that they would do at an art fair would help with having that brick and mortar space. And it was an interesting relationship with art fairs and galleries because you had to have a brick and mortar building gallery sometimes to get into these art fairs, right? It's like you had to have a, you had to be a legitimate gallery to right. be able to participate in the art fair. So it was a relationship that fed each other. The art fair was helping them support some of the overhead and was allowing these galleries to get a, a much broader, larger clientele mm -hmm. um, and not have to just rely on the regional aspect of where the gallery was. And then, um, it, so it supported the overhead of the gallery and, and then the, you know, you had to be a gallery to be a, able to support the art fair booth. Sure. Um, but I think that's, it, it remains to be seen how that will shift because of this COVID thing. And it's probably what you're seeing in Las Vegas can large crowds gather and look at art in the way that they used to in a responsible yeah. way that, that would be yeah. able to, right and, and maybe we'll go maybe they'll go back. I, I don't think that will happen i don't think we'll see art fairs um i don't know it just remains to be seen and that and the other thing i loved it there was a wonderful article in the la times that also sort of showed the ludicrousy of art fairs because a lot of times the art gets sold before it ever it gets pre-sold before it ever goes to an art fair and so you uh, one dealer described it as you're basically sending the artwork on vacation <laughs> to oh. right yeah you know it's basically like when it's already sold that yeah. this piece of art is going on vacation to miami basel right and um you have to think about the footprint on that you know it's it, the on all of those works of art if they're pre-sold, what is our responsibility, you know, as far as the footprint for all that? Right, right. What is, what is it worth doing uh, going forward? But I think art fairs may be affected um, profoundly by this. And that was going to profoundly affect some galleries. 
So in the, I know that in the, I, I guess I dabbled in as a ca cartoonist for a while. And, and one of yep. the things that I learned about being a cartoonist is that there's limited real estate. And that a lot of times real estate is handed down. It's like, it's like people, you know, they hand it, this is my space and I'm granting it to this one, this person here that's already in. There's a lot of things that go into it and it keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So, and, and you know, as, as an art form, it, it, it's, it's, oh, you popped away. Are you still there? Hold on. I got to oh. plug. Hold on. Oh, okay. No worries. Yeah. Um, no. So I, I, well, I only have, I, I have, I'm giving myself about maybe like a little less than 10 more minutes with you. And I wanted to delve into a certain thing uh, with you there. Um, and and yeah, I was kind of touching into it with that, but sometimes I take a long time to get to something, but I'm just going to ask you. So there's two, there's two types of artists right now that I'm curious about that are the seasoned, the older artists that have been around a long time that have been part of showing in galleries. And now there's this huge shift and they have to change the way they've been doing it. And I know there's some reluctance from some of these, these artists sometimes to change and shift and, and bob and weave. And these people aren't salesmen most of the time. They're not willing to, they're not businessmen. They're just yeah. artists. And what did, I'm just asking for advice for, 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 for those kinds of people in, in, in how to go forward in a way that's constructive in working with galleries. Uh, is there some, just to hear it from, from you, I know they probably hear it, but I'm just curious. Yeah. So you're uh, saying um, older artists, right? This is just an example, because I got who, younger. I want to go younger artists too, but I'm right. starting with the older guys. You're saying older artists who haven't shown a lot, or yeah, or that that may is there a change in 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 the space now with with the galleries not maybe not being open so much? Is there is there a shift? Are there are, is there is it? I don't know what I'm, I guess I know much. So I didn't really think this through to be honest. Yeah. Not trying to, yeah, so. Uh, yeah. So let's just shift over to, instead of talking about them, let's shift over to younger artists. Cause over here in Las Vegas, we have the art, in art Institute that actually folded. And there's a lot of these young artists don't have anywhere to go. Okay. So they're, they're, they're communing in on with groups and organizations that are coming together to show their work. Uh -huh. And they're looking to eventually maybe want to show work and, and present it to, to you and to people like you. Mm -hmm. What advice could you give to a young artist? And you know, you touched on it a little bit about yeah. worry about your pitch. Don't, don't just make these assumptions, create relationships. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, so my, my biggest um, with young artists is do wherever you are, um, spend time in galleries. Um, to really try to network with other artists. I mean, this business really is a networking relationship and networking business and people ask me all the time you know how do you make decisions about what you show well it's all based on um years of relationships where if, if there's an artist i've worked with and i've had 10 years of conversation with him it, it's very easy for him to say you might like so-and-so's work and because i know he knows me and my taste and we've worked then i'm gonna look at that artist's work and chances are he's right you know, I mean, it's that kind of, so artists help artists a lot. Right. Um, and Tom Delling is probably one of the best people I know for that too, just in terms of networking people together. You know? supposed, you're not supposed to mention Tom. Oh, sorry. <laughs> he, told me to, he told me not to do that. <laughs> you're going to get me in that. trouble. <laughs> you didn't hear that. Edit it. Um, um, but anyway, but it, you know, so I think artists help artists. So go, I always say, go to opening, you know, get to know other artists, uh -huh. go to their openings, uh, get to know their galleries. Yeah. And then I think, get to know the galleries in your area. Um, when I was talking to senior graduating art students here, I was telling them, you have to, they, a lot of them didn't get out of Orange County. I'm like, you have to get up to LA. You have to go. You need to know what's happening up there because there's not a strong art scene here. And so go where there's a good art scene and um, go to openings, get on gallery mailing lists. Don't show your work to them until you've seen at least six exhibitions by each of those galleries. So, yeah, and, there's, there's uh, some hard get, truths and, here. There's some hard truths. Get truth on the that. mailing list. Yeah. Get, before you ask for them to even look at your art, you know, build a relationship with whoever that person is at the front desk or, you know, gallery owner or whomever and um, get on their mailing list and, and you know, you can't, I always say, you can't talk to them or, about your art for six months. <laughs> anyway, so that would be one advice. 
go to visit galleries, get to know artists that are showing in galleries, and then, you, you know, get on those gallery mailing lists and really follow them sincerely for six months to be before you ever make uh, an assumption that your work is right for them or that you would want to show with them. Um, find, men think, find some mentors, right? I mean, find, find yeah, people find that, mentor, to, yeah. Mentor, great. Um, and then I also think, um, oh, I know, get outside your region. I think a lot of artists get stuck thinking that they need to show with galleries where they live. Mm -hmm. And I know that there's advantages um, to, I know some artists here that do pretty well just marketing their own work. Bradford, can I mention his name? Mm -hmm. You can mention he's, Bradford, yeah, he's okay. <laughs> he's a good example of someone yeah. who's really good at marketing his own work. Yeah. And he builds, he's got his own clientele here. So mm -hmm. in his case, I think he's an example of you know, an artist that it would be best for him to find galleries that are out of state yeah. um, as opposed to galleries around him because he's, he does his own marketing and he does it well yeah. where he lives. So I think that's just another thing for artists to think about. Of, um, don't restrict yourself to finding a gallery in your area. You know, look and see what other um, areas, regions that might be appropriate for your work. Right. So, and there's different you know, styles that'll dictate that a little it, bit. It requires a lot of courage because you, you need to explore things that you're not comfortable with, but do it in a way thoughtfully, do it in a way, because the last thing you want to do is annoy people <laughs> that are, that, you know, they just, you know, they, there's only, like you said, there's limited, or I think I said it, there's limit, limited space and right. your, your work will carry you there. If you, right. you gotta put everything you've got into your work, and, but when you're looking at the business side of what you're trying to do when you're selling it, you have to have a little bit of uh, forethought and think ahead of it a little bit. And networking, like you said, networking is incredibly important. And I think that's something that they don't think about is the right. importance of networking and reaching out and taking a chance with someone that works in the industry as opposed to somebody in, in reaching directly right to the source, which is not a right. good thing. We were wrapping up. Um, and uh, she was getting a lot of calls and she unfortunately was working on her phone. And so we got disconnected, unfortunately. And she did that, she let you come back and we kind of finished up the conversation, but unfortunately that didn't get recorded <laughs> because of the breakup of the thing. Uh, but anyway, regardless, thank you so much, Jeannie, for, for coming on and sharing some of your wisdom and, and uh, some important information for young artists. Um, and, um, and I'm hoping that we'll be able to you know, continue the conversation again and um, I'm looking forward to talking to you uh, probably on the other side of this COVID thing when you were, uh, and maybe I'll even go over there and see your gallery and, and when it's seeing it full of people, you know, enjoying some artwork and eating fruit and drinking champagne and all that fun stuff that they do in those things. Anyway, thanks a lot. I really appreciate the insight. And um, all right. So like and subscribe and hopefully uh, you'll enjoy, you enjoyed that and you'll enjoy the next one in the next discussion we're going to have on creativity. Thanks for listening to Creative Courage Chat.